Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God and welcome to Unshackle Ministries here in the wonderful, beautiful city of Paramount, California. Just want to welcome all of you that are here in the church with us and all of you that are joining us through Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. We just praise God that the Lord is using all of these wonderful platforms to help us to go beyond the walls of the church. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We bless your holy name, Lord God. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Father God. We just exalt you, Lord God, we, and praise you this morning, Lord God, for you are a mighty God. You're an awesome God, Lord God. And we just declare your kingdom here on earth, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, Lord God, you are mighty, Lord God. You are wonderful, Lord God. And you are the God of grace and mercy and love, Lord. So we just pray your blessings upon our service. We pray your mighty divine presence here. We give complete control. We submit and just give control to the Holy Spirit to move and to lead this service in the hearts of each and every person, Lord God. May your word be exalted. May you be glorified. And may the name of Jesus be praised and honored in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hey, praise God. Well, we got a good word for you this morning. God woke me up with a good, good uh, um, word for all of us to be encouraged. Amen. Yes. And so I pray that uh, you will receive it like that. Don't get uh, don't get a little stunned by the semi title I gave it. Amen. And it, what it is is don't be wishy washy. Amen. <laughs> And uh, some people will get all upset and offended, you know, especially in the Christian circle. Wow, don't be wishy-washy. Nobody's judging, but you know that we kind of get wishy-washy sometimes. Amen? amen? If we be honest, amen? And so we don't want to be wishy-washy believers, amen? amen. Or wishy-washy Christians. We want to be, um, have, a, and care, we want to have integrity of character and, and displaying the character of Christ because that's who lives in us. Amen? amen. Praise God. So we have a wonderful service plan, and I just pray God's wonderful word. I got a lot of announcements, a lot of things are going on um, in our conference, in our church, amen. And uh, we're getting ready for the wonderful season, the greatest season in Christianity, and that's the resurrection of Jesus Christ, amen, amen. a.k.a. Easter. <laughs> uh, but um, God has wonderful plans for us, and uh, I believe that as we get ready to prepare our hearts for Easter, Resurrection Sunday, we have to get ready and jump into Palm Sunday. And uh, next Sunday, I need you to bring all your palms with you. Amen. Hello. Um, and I don't mean like the palm branches. Amen. But we probably will have some of those here. Amen. We probably might look for a donkey to bring in too. Amen. You know, because, you know, Jesus brought all those things on Palm Sunday. He rode in on a donkey. Amen. So... Um, it's going to be an exciting thing. We're planning a, a little semi-event after our service next Sunday to celebrate Palm Sunday. Amen. And um, um, we'll be having some wonderful, um, we'll having some food and some fellowship after after service in the fellowship hall. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So it's going to be a blessing. Um, so keep that in your hearts. Amen. Put that in your schedules um, that you don't plan lunch for next Sunday because lunch will be provided. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, we're going to go ahead and just let us worship God right now. Amen. Celebrate Jesus and be grateful. Amen. And as they sing, you sing. Caesar puts the lyrics up there. Let your hearts just rise unto the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise you, Lord. Amen. Let's just praise and worship the Lord this morning. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank 
Thank you, Father, and praise you, Lord. Amen, Father God. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord.
Let's walk in joy no matter how we're feeling, no matter how the day is. Let's praise and let's shout for joy because he is our God and greater than anything that could come against us in Jesus' name, Lord. So I thank you, Father God. We just pray blessings and peace and joy, Lord. Fill us, Lord, this day, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God's Spirit is here. Yes, amen. And uh, the Lord wants to speak into our lives today. Amen. amen. And um, that's why we came with this nifty little title for today's message Don't Be Wishy Washy Believers. Amen. Be real. Have integrity. Know that God is real because when we live um, the life of, of a believer, it just shows, you know, how real our God is because Amen. the world will see the transformation that God has done in our lives. Amen. Uh, maybe you didn't have a really dark past or a dark life. Amen. Uh, maybe, um, um, you, but we were all sinners before we came to Christ and we are still sinners saved by grace. Amen. Um, but, um, there's a change now, amen. We don't handle life circumstances and situations as we did when we didn't have no hope. How many of you have hope in Christ today? Amen. amen. How many of you believe that God is here to help you? Amen. Amen. Then uh, we trust in him and his love. Amen. Praise God. Um, the first part of our announcements are that uh, don't forget that um, Saturday, March 30th at 11 a.m., uh, we're going to be having water baptisms at our La Mirada Church, Lighthouse Christian Center at La Mirada. Uh, and so far I have two, uh, two folks that are going to get baptized. That's Brother Hector and, uh, and, and Jude. Amen. Um, so um, if, you, if anybody else wants to get into that, uh, into that, then let me know so we can plan it. The pastor... Um, Pastor Cluck, the pastor of the church over there, is going to have everything all ready for us. We can go in there. You can invite your family. You can invite your friends. And we're going to have a wonderful time and, uh, and have a nice water baptism. And then uh, we'll celebrate it on Sunday, the following day, which will be, I believe, Easter Sunday, right? Amen? How many of you are ready for Easter? Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know. I don't know. That was, that was one of the biggest events in my life as a, as a youngster. Amen. Um, Mom and dad, they found a way to always go get us new shoes, new clothes. Sometimes when we were younger, they bought us all these, they would buy us suits. Amen. And uh, we had to get dressed up like that. Amen. And it was good. So March 30th, mark that on your calendars. Amen. And even if maybe you're not getting water baptized, maybe you want to go and celebrate this with our church members and church family that are doing it. Amen? Praise God. And then, um, just a reminder to all the men, um, we're having um, our men's conference um, this April 5th and 6th um, in Bloomington, California, and uh, at Brother Pila's church. And it's going to be a wonderful event. God is Bless me that um, I've already arranged um, uh, four speakers to come and do the training sessions for us on Saturday. Um, it's uh, $50 for each uh, guy. And maybe you don't have the $50, you know. Um, you don't have to pay it right away. I mean, or, you know, if you're having a thing, well, we can help you with that. Amen. Um, but it's for us, we're like coming from a little distance. So we can arrange it so the $50 will cover uh, a, a, a night stay at the hotel that they've arranged. We've arranged to hold 15 rooms for us, amen. And uh, it's double occupancy, so it's going to be a blessing. Um, the men can come Friday in the afternoon or, and uh, check into the hotel and get rested up or, you know, get there a little later, however. And um, 
things will be waiting. And then at 7 o'clock, we'll start our, our worship service on Friday night. We'll just do worship on Friday night for the men. And then go back to the hotel, sleep, get up early in the morning, have a free <coughs> breakfast right there at the hotel that's being provided for us there too as well. And then get into the training sessions Saturday at 9 o'clock from 9 to 2. It's very, very quick, very simple, but very powerful what God can do. Amen? Amen. So men, be available. Um, God has a good, a good message for us, and it's called, um, you know, be, um, be deliberate about who you are as a man. Amen? Be um, um, a man of God that, that's going to go after and press after being a man of God. Amen? Because, you know, as I'm preparing for this, it just carries with it the, 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 all the ingredients as a man of God. You know, we think just as the man, but all the things that a man of God has to be. And he has to be intentional at it. A man of God has to be a man of God in his relationship with God. Amen. He's got to be a man of God intentionally uh, in, in his church, in his family, with his children, his work. Amen. It covers a lot that we're going to be covering, but we have to be intentional. Amen. And uh, we're going to learn a little bit about intentional today. Amen. So uh, it's going to be a wonderful time. So I just encourage the men. It's going to be a blessing. Um, get together, fellowship. For some, it'll be like a camp out. Some will be spending time in the room, you know, at that night, you know, and it'll be a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. And then um, we'll get ready, of course, for our, our Good Friday service. We'll have a Good Friday service before Easter. Um, and so that'll be a wonderful time as well. And then we'll have our wonderful Easter uh, service where we'll, we'll have a good resurrection message. Amen? Amen? Praise God. I believe that's about everything that I got covered. Amen? I need your prayers because I'm the, I'm the director of our conference for all of our churches here in Southern California. Amen? Of our men's ministry. So, um, just like sometimes there's a little indecisiveness about if the men want to participate and be part of this, um, I have to go through this with um, 15 other churches right now. Amen? Um, some of them because, um, you know, I don't know. But it's something good. And when we need to invest in ourselves, this is a good investment. Amen? It's a good investment for the men, the young teenage young men. Amen? to be part of it as well. So praise God. Amen? Amen. And um, that's it. Don't forget, next Sunday after Palm Sunday, we're going to have lunch here in the fellowship hall. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So we'll be throwing something together. Praise God. Uh, maybe some tacos, maybe some hamburgers. I don't know. Amen? But God will have something good for you. Amen? And if you're a vegetarian, we'll just bring a lot of vegetables for you. <laughs> Amen? And uh, how many of you are like vegetarians? How many of you like meat? <laughs> I have a lot of meat. Praise God. Praise God. Um, keep in prayer, Brother Alvin. God, he was really sick this morning on his way to urgent care. Please keep him in prayer. Keep our bishop, Bishop Terry. I know all of you remember him. He came here. He's called me this morning. And he's, he's feeling really, really, really not too good today, so just keep him in your prayers, please. Amen? Amen. Um, so today's message is, um, for us, is found in the book of Philippians. We'll get there in a minute. Amen? It's um, having good intentions is not enough. How many of you know that? How many of you know that we can just have good intentions, but we never get anything done? Oh yeah, let's have good intentions and let's let the children go to children's class. <laughs> Praise God. I've been forgetting that. Well, after a couple of years of not having children's classes, <clears throat> praise God. So having good intentions is not good enough. We as believers must be intentional believers. Amen. You must be strong in your walk with God. And you must believe that you have a walk with God. How many of you know that? That you you know, the Lord lives in you. You came to Christ. Christianity is about a relationship that you have got blessed by God Almighty in our repentance and acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ into our lives. Amen? Amen. We asked Him to come into our lives because life without God or the way we were living without God before we came to Christ was very challenging and maybe it had a lot of dark sides like I shared. Amen? 
or there was a lot of problems, amen? Maybe you had been the victim of a lot of things that happened and you were hurt, you were broken, and Christ came into your life, amen? Well, now we have to be intentional about that relationship that we have with God. We have to let, you know, we have to be light shining in a dark world. We have to be the ones that can say there's hope, there's hope. There's hope for you. Don't give up. Keep pressing on. Keep moving forward. Amen. Keep reading your Bible. Keep praying. Keep going to church. Keep seeking. Keep knocking. Keep asking. Don't give up because God is faithful and he will make sure that your prayers get answered. Amen. That your desires get fulfilled. Amen. In him. Hello. Praise God. So we must be intentional uh, because just having the good intention is not going to get it done. Amen. We'll be looking at the book of Philippians, chapter, um, chapters, I'm going to start with chapter, um, chapter, uh, verse 1, chapter 3 though, chapter 3, I'm sorry, verse 1. <clears throat> I'm going to read verse 1 and then I'm going to move into verse 7. It says, further my brothers and sisters, amen, further my brothers and sisters, and this is the Apostle Paul, He's, he has started and established his church in Philippi, amen, and now he's writing a letter to encourage them in the Lord, amen, to help build them up, amen. He says, furthermore, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. And sometimes we have to be reminded to rejoice in the Lord because sometimes the storms in life, the clouds in life, the depressions in life, they get so heavy around us. Sometimes the loss of things, of, of, of family or friends, you know, it gets so, so hard on us. Amen. And so we need God to be there with us. Amen. So the Apostle Paul tells us to rejoice. Don't, 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 don't let it affect your, your, your heart in a way where you just, you know, and it, you know, it breaks you down. It gives opportunity for the enemy to come in and take advantage of your vulnerability that you have because you're in a position of weakness. Amen. And so we want to be strong in the Lord, not in our own strength, not in our own might, but by the power and the strength of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hello. So he says, further, further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same thing to you again and it is a safeguard for you amen it's a safeguard and he was going to talking about those people that were coming in there and trying to trying to get the believers that had already accepted Christ to go back to old ways and old traditions so he was speaking against them and he was telling them don't let don't let those folks don't let them come in there and mess up what God has been doing in your life amen and sometimes you'll find religious things you'll find sometimes even people that are in the faith that have gone astray amen will try to discourage you but you have to stay steadfast you have to keep your you know you know your focus your eyes on the Lord amen hello when people, Christians, otherwise let you down, parents let you down, or whoever let you down, keep your eyes on the Lord. Hello? Because God will never fail you, and God will never let you down. Amen? amen? And so if we stay steadfast in our journey, in our relationship, amen, we're intentional about it, the world will see it. They will recognize that there's something different about you. Amen. You're not the same way that you used to be. Or you're not the same way as everybody else. No. Something in you has been touched by God. And you light up the world with the hope that lives in you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So the Apostle Paul says, I I'm not going to get tired of telling you over and over and over again. Amen. As a preacher, as a pastor, you sometimes go over the same messages, maybe in a different format or a different way. But we go over the same thing again and again. And what is it for? To edify the church, to give you education in the things of God. Amen. Hello. Because we spend time studying, going to school, some seminary, some colleges. Amen. And, and what for? What's the purpose of it? To help build up the church of God, the people of God. Amen? Amen? But we have to be intentional about it. We have to continue to remember that that's our mission. That's, that's what God has called us. That's the higher calling God has given to us. Amen? And sometimes, you know, um, well, I'm going to leave leadership alone. Praise God. Um, but God, he, the Apostle Paul says it's a safeguard for you to be instructed, for you to be encouraged. Amen? 
Praise God. And then when I get to verse 7, it says there, it says, but whatever was to my prophet, because the, the Apostle Paul was going through all the things, all of his achievements in the flesh, and he was a, uh, in the flesh, he was like um, very educated, um, very strong in, in, in God, amen, worked for the, uh, um, for the, um, you know, at first working against the church, and then God changed him, and he started, you know, promoting the church, amen. But he says, all the things that I gained in the flesh, amen, I count them as nothing, amen, so I can know God better. Hello? And when we can get that intentional, that intentional, that intentional spirit, amen, and be intentionally seeking God, intentionally, you know, confessing that God is my Lord, and then we'll start, you know, we keep believing, we start confessing it, amen. Like this morning, I believe a lot of you received the declaration I sent to you, right? Declare this. Confess this over your life. Amen. Pray this over your life. So that that's intentionally. So that you can say, you know what? The devil's not going to win today. I don't care what comes against me. I don't care. But I know that God is for me and not against me. Amen. Amen. Hello? So the Apostle Paul was telling the Philippian church, he says, but whatever it was to my prophet, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. Amen. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. He's saying that by knowing Christ, amen, he doesn't matter if he loses friends, if he loses these things or material things. He says, you know what, I, you know, or, or, or doesn't use his, his, his learnings that he had before, you know, in order to, to do wrong, amen. He says, I, I, I consider them lost and like nothing because I just want to know Christ better. I want to know God better. I want to have a stronger relationship with my Lord, amen. Because see, when you're intentional with your relationship with God, it'll make you intentional with your relationship with your spouse, with your family, with your husband, with your wife, with your children. You'll become more intentional about that. You'll become more intentional about your church, about, you know, it won't just be a something. It'll be, it won't be something you're doing. It won't be mechanical because it'll be something that's indwelt in you. Amen. And that comes from, from love. Amen. God's love. But the Apostle Paul says this, I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish. Everything that he had, his education, everything that who he was before he said, I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ. Amen? That I may gain Christ. How many know that it's important? How do we gain Christ? Well, we gain it by what you're doing today. Coming to church, fellowshipping, at home, reading your Bibles, and your integrity. You do things honestly. You don't look for ways to be crooked or deceptive. Amen? But you say, I'm going to have a walk with God that I'm not going to be ashamed of. Amen? That I'm not going to have to pretend because it's real, because my God is real, and he's truly alive, and he lives in me. Hello? Amen. So I have hope. I'm not going to walk around defeated. I'm not going to walk around beat up. I'm not going to walk around the victim because I'm going to walk around as, as the victor. Amen. Amen. I'm going to walk around with my head up, not down all the time. Amen. Life's been hard. Life's been tough. Everything's a struggle. You know, no, God is for me, not against me. Life's been wonderful. That's faith. Maybe there is trouble. Maybe there is trouble. But I'm going to keep confessing life is good because God is with me. Today's a good day because God called the day good. Whether it's a stormy day, a rainy day, a tornado day, whatever day the weather wants to make it, amen? It's a good day because God made it a good day. Amen? Hello. Praise God. You love Him today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. He says that he wanted um, to, you know, he said that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. A righteousness, righteousness means a right standing with God, a right understanding of God. The righteousness that comes from God is by faith, by faith. Believing and, and believing that something is real that we can't even see. Yes. Amen? Amen? Holding on to it no matter what. Amen? Amen. Hello? Amen. 
a righteous a righteousness that comes by faith from God and is by faith. Who does it come by? God. God. Amen. He's the one that for God for God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son that whoever believeth in Him shall not perish, yes, amen. but have everlasting life. Amen. Your name written in this book in heaven that's called the book of life, folks, where Christ wrote your name. Amen. Hello, Danny Tyler, Edith Ann Shisher, Trifford. <laughs> Hallelujah. Estella. Amen. God wrote your names down yes. in this book. And it's there. Yes. Are you here with me? And, and, and it's his wonderful gift. Amen. Of love. For he gave his only son. Amen. The righteousness that comes from God is by faith. I want you to know Christ. And now he's talking to them. He tells them this. He gave us his story. Now he says, I want you. I want I want to know Christ. And I want you to know Christ. And the power of his resurrection. Yes. Amen. The power that raised him from the dead. A dead person. Amen. That was dead. Gone. You know, whatever. Amen. That the power of God. See, that's where faith comes in. Do you believe? You know, because that's all the foundation. That's all the, the, the most important thing. Is that Jesus Christ is not dead anymore, but he rose from the dead. Yes, he was dead for three days, but on the third day, he rose from the dead. Amen? Amen. That's the power of God. That's what we have to like. Don't question everything. Just say, God, I don't understand. I don't know how it happens. I'm not a scientist, but I have faith. Faith is believing without seeing, but knowing. But knowing it did happen. It's real. My Jesus is alive. Amen? Amen. Forevermore. And he says, I want, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, so, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Amen? Because he himself wants to know that. Amen? Educated man, powerful man of God, wrote most of the books in the New Testament. Amen? The epistles. Amen? And yet this was his goal. This was his goal. To know God better. Hello. And the power that changes. Hello. Amen. These are the main uh, key scriptures that I want to give you now. Verses 12, 13, and 14. Where it says, not that I have already attained all of this. Amen. Hello. Not that he has. Oh, he's got it all. Amen. And we should all stay there because, you know, that keeps us in a humble state. We never want to get to this place where we, oh, I got it all. You know, I know it all. You know, how many of you like know-it-alls? You know, sometimes they get a little annoying, amen? But I know it all. But you know it all. Sometimes people barely start coming. They oh, I better believe the Lord. Um, but I've had some people that barely start coming, barely give their life to Christ. And then they want to come and tell me the Bible and tell me everything about, you know, this is the way. I have to be very humble and I have to listen to them with a good heart. But they're, they're not understanding everything yet. Amen? So we wait until God can, you know, time to, to develop. Amen? Verse 12 says, Not that I have already attained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold. I press on. Keep that in your heart right there. I press on to take hold of that for which Christ took hold of me. When Christ came into your life, amen, he took hold of you. Now you need to take hold of him for why he took hold of you. He wanted to make you into a new creation, amen? Are, are you here with me? No. A new creation, old things will pass away, all things will become new, created in the image and likeness of Christ, amen? Showing his life in this world, amen? Being a light. In a dark world, where it's all, anyways, and so, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. He's still, he's still working at it, amen? He's still growing and developing, amen? And we as Christians and believers, we have to continue growing and developing, amen? He says, brothers, I do not consider myself 
yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, say, but one thing I do. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Forgetting what is behind and moving forward. Sometimes we can keep looking uh, or holding on to so many things from behind. Memories, hurts, abuses, you know, things that happened in the past. Amen. Maybe the good times. Hello. And we're holding on to some of those things that they don't let us go forward. You know? But how many of you want to go forward? Hallelujah. How many of you want to rise up? Hallelujah. That's what that's the call of God. Amen. Praise God. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. He's being honest. He's being sincere. The Apostle Paul, a mighty man of God, he said, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Straining toward, because sometimes he, he says straining. You know, he, he's taking it, you know, it's, it's, it's intentional. I'm moving ahead. I'm pressing on. Amen. No matter what comes, no matter if I slip, no matter if this, I'm going to keep pressing on. I'm going to keep moving forward. Amen. For the kingdom of God, for my relationship that I value. Amen. Are you here with me? You know, and it's, it's important to value your relationship. Amen. I value my relationship with my wife. Amen. She's my wife. She's been my wife for, I don't know how many years now, but it's been a long time. Amen. And, and, and so I mean, I'll fight for my relationship with her, amen? Sometimes I have to fight up all of those guys when she was more younger, you know, in school. Yeah, literally fight, you know, get away from her, you know? Because I valued my relationship with her, hello? You know? And, and that's, that's, that's the thing we have to value, our relationship with God. I fight for this relationship with him because I want to make, because I, you know who sometimes is going to be the, the, the one that's going to be fighting against you the most? To keep this relationship strong. You know who's going to be fighting against you the most? Some of you may be thinking what the devil is. No. Sometimes your own self. I was going to say ourselves. Yourselves. Because you, you, we forfeit all that we could have. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because we don't value. We value too many things of the flesh. More than this. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him. In spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. Hello. Praise God. It says, Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Verse 15. For all of us who are mature, say, I'm mature. Say, I'm mature. I'm mature. Amen. How many of you are immature, though? <laughs> Say, I'm mature. I'm mature. You know what mature means, right? Yeah. Praise God. I hope so. Amen. Because <laughs> um, they should have teach you that in junior high school. Amen. I, all of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if at some point, look at he tells the Apostle Paul saying, and at some point you think differently, that too. Man will make clear to you. Is that what it says in there? Who's going to make it clear to you? God. Are you okay? But sometimes we want people to make. God is the one that makes things clear to me. Amen. He's the one that helps me to stay, uh, you know, uh, in the truth and not in the lie. Amen. To see us, uh, to see the, the 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 way instead of the error. Amen. Hello. Praise God. He says, um, <clears throat> God, that God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. You know, how many of you know you've been a Christian or you've been going to church and you for a little while now? Well, what, you, what you've been learning, start living up to what you already know. Amen? Mm -hmm. Start living it. Start confessing it. Start doing it. Amen? Intentionally. Start doing it. Start living that life. Amen? Intentionally get out there and tell somebody, God loves you. Yeah. There's hope. Your situation looks very bad. But you know what? God can heal you. God can deliver you. God can take away that bad habit. God can. Amen. God can break the chains of addiction. Yeah. God can 
break the chains of vices that hold us in bondage. Amen. God can break the chain of unforgiveness. Hello. God can break the chains of injustice. But we have to let ourselves be there. Only let us live up to what we already know. Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. For as I have often told you, and now say it again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is their is their is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is their shame. Their mind is only on earthly things, for their mind is on earthly things. Amen? Earthly. You know, the worries and the cares, you know, we need to be responsible. We need to be the stewards. Amen? God wants to bless us here on this earth. He wants to, the Bible says he came to bless us abundantly. Amen? Abundantly. Amen. Bless our lives abundantly. God wants to do that for us. Amen? Now, it may not be in all the things you cherish or, or, you, or pleasure you, amen, but God has a good life plan for you that brings glory to him and brings honor to you as you walk with integrity with him, amen, amen. if you intentionally seek that, amen. Their minds are on earthly things, but look at it, verse 20 says, it says, but our citizenship is in heaven. You know, when Christ came into your heart, you received your, your, your passport. Amen. Well, a passport doesn't even make you a citizen, does it? That just makes you somebody that can go and visit other countries. Mm -hmm. No, he made you a citizen. Yeah. A citizen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Are you even, who else are citizens in heaven? His angels? Right? So if we're citizens, amen, um, how many of you have ever gone to like on a vacation or something like that, you've gone to like Mexico or Jamaica or some other country, mm -hmm. amen, and you say, well, it's not like that in America, <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, it's the same thing here. Sometimes we start saying, well, it's not like that in the flesh, Jesus <laughs> And he will start other other believers or other Christians. It's not like that, you know, in my church, hello. But you know what? We all have one call from God, and that is to be believers in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hello. But our citizenship, our citizenship is in heaven, as and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming back. Hello. Right. He's coming back. But if you truly believe that, then Je how many believe today that Jesus is coming back? Amen. How many know he's coming back for you? You're the body of Christ. You're the bride of Christ. He's coming back for his church. Amen. That's what he's coming back for. Amen. So he, he also said that he's coming back for his bride. Amen. His church. That he's coming back that doesn't have any wrinkles or stains in it. Hello? That means he's, he's, he's planning our life to be pure. Are you? That doesn't mean we, because we're, we, you know, we're growing Christians. Because you know, we're, if we're growing Christians, God is patient, God is faithful, and God watches us to grow, develop, and develop. Amen. Hello. Just like a little baby, you don't expect the baby to feed himself. He needs to be changed. He needs to be fed. He needs to be nursed. He needs to right, nourished. Amen. Then he grows to be a, you know, a little toddler. And, he has to be looked out for because little toddlers put their hands in things and do things and like, you know, you know toddlers, right? Well, you know, that's the same kind of thing growing in as Christ. You're a baby in Christ when you first come. Then you become a little bit more of a youngster. And then you get to that place. When were you the most rebellious? Teenage Teenagers, right? You wanted to Explore, right? And some of those things that we started to explore ended up getting us in difficulties. <laughs> difficulties, right? Even if they were good, they, we weren't we weren't mature. We weren't ready enough to ha to handle those things. Amen. Praise God. 
So we eagerly await from a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so they will be like his glorious body. Amen? I hope you caught that. It will transform our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body the way it is today. Oh, hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Again, verse 12 through 14 says, not that I've already attained all this. Philippians 3, 12. Not that I've already attained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. I press on. Say, I press on. I press, I press on. on. Amen. He says, brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do. Now say this with me. One thing I will start doing. <laughs> now, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Amen? I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. In another um, version of the Bible, it says, but I'm bringing all my energies to bear on this one thing. Amen. One thing I do. And the Living Bible says, I bring all, I'm bringing all my energies to bear on this one thing. Amen. You know, when your energies are spread all over the place, and sometimes it's naturally like that. If you're a parent, your mother, your wife, your energies do get spread, amen? But your main energy should be to continue to focus in your relationship with God. Build it up. It's worth it. Amen? God will take care of your every need. Amen. It may be a health need. It may be a deliverance. It may be a financial need. It may be a relational need. But you know what? God is faithful, and he will see to it. He'll never let you struggle, amen? Amen. We'll go through hard times, but he'll be in the struggle with us. Hello? How many of you know that? That God will be in the tr troubles or the things that get hard. He'll be in the car with us. Yeah. Amen? There's three Hebrew children that testify to that. Meshach, Eshach, and I forget their names. But anyways, Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were thrown into the fiery furnace. Heated up seven times hotter than normally it's heated up. That means it was a real bad situation to me. I'm just thinking like that. And who was in the fire with them? The Bible says Jesus was in the fire with them. Amen. The Bible says that the fires they were in didn't even burn their clothes. Didn't even make them smell like smoky fire. You know, things that burn smell like that. But one thing that it did, God used the fires. They were meant to to kill them, to harm them, to set them free. Yeah. Amen. Those are the only things that burned off, Rhonda. They had them all tied up in all those man bondages. See, God came to set the captives free. Yeah. Are you here with me? Yeah. Praise God. Another version uh, said, in the New Living Translation says this, but I focus on this one thing. I don't know. Anybody know who Joyce Meyer is? Yes. She said this, good intentions never change anything. <laughs> if there's no action, that's what I'm trying to say today, folks. If we're not intentional, if we're not intentionally, if there's no action, amen, it's, it's you know, it's nothing. It's just good intentions. Are you here with me? Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher said this, no one would remember the Good Samaritan if, if he only had good intentions. He had compassion as well. Amen? He did not say, oh, I wish I could go over there and help him. Oh, that poor guy. Somebody should go help him. Oh, the other thing we kind of do a lot is, God, feed the homeless. God, feed the hungry. You know what happened to his disciples when when the 5,000 and the 4,000 were hungry, they came and they said, who's going to feed them all? And you know what Jesus told them? You guys feed them. Hello? And that's what God tells us to do, amen? And we can do that in our own 
our own little worlds, our own little mm -hmm. ways of people around. We can do that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hello. I had one pastor, Phil Ag Aguilar from Set Free Ministries in Anaheim. He used to be out there. And he said, people make it so difficult. And they're always waiting for me. He was a pastor. I was waiting for me to do it. And I tell him, you know what? Don't wait for me. I'm busy trying to get Sunday sermon prepared for you. I'm busy visiting the elderly or the sick. Hello. Mm -hmm. You know, so you got to get out there and, and you see the hungry. Buy food, feed hungry. Mm -hmm. You see the homeless. Take them to find shelter. Hello. Are you? That's how simple things can be. You know, that's we the church. Amen. And if you get out there and you start being intentional, you'll start seeing that Christ will be showing you. And the more you reach out to do his will, to walk in his footsteps, to be his hands, to be his voice, amen, to be his feet, amen, and to have his heart, you will reach people and you will touch those that are broken, those that are hungry, those that are in bondage. You will touch them because God will use your very hands, amen. Your very intentions will not be false intentions or blind intentions or empty intentions. They'll be, you'll intentionally say, I'm going to help somebody today. Amen. Hello. That's been my cry. You know, and one of the most testimonies that I have is when, when, when Brother Hardier and his family and Sister Betty, anyway, they send their blessings and their greetings. They, they talked to me the other day. Amen. Um, I remember after I went to visit him at his house and I sat outside and I said, God, please use me to help this man to break this addiction he has. Please, God, help me to help this man. Because I knew I couldn't do it by myself. Amen? But God broke the curse. God delivered him. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3 Verse 2 says, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. You know? Where are your minds at this week, this day? Are they on earthly things? Yeah, Pastor, because I got to work or I got to do this or I got to do that, right? You're always going to have something. But you know what? First and foremost, your hearts should be directed to heaven. And God, I have a lot, I have a lot of burdens. I have a lot to carry. Like he says, cast your burdens upon me for I care for you. Amen. Come to me and I will give you rest. Amen. From all the busyness, the anxieties that happen in life. Amen. Hello. Praise God. This morning, God is going to break chains. This morning, God is going to break chains that will finally allow us to go into our divine, God-given destiny and purpose. If you become intentional, amen, you can't be stuck. Are you hearing me? If you become intentional, you can't be stuck because I'm moving forward. I'm not going to stay back here. I'm not going to work. You know, you don't. Oh, my goodness. That is good. Amen. Amen. Intentionally seek God's will for your life. Do you hear a spirit this morning? This morning, God is going to break chains that will finally allow us to go into our divine, God given destiny and purpose. And if you become intentional, you can't be stuck. Intentions are good, but not good enough. Amen? Intentionality requires actions toward the goal. Are you hearing me? Intention, say that with me, intentionality. Amen. Amen. Those words are kind of hard for me, Amber, because, you know, with my kindergarten education, um, but I practice saying it over and over and over again. Amen? And I, and I understand what it means. Intention. Do the will of God in your life. Amen? Amen. Intentionality requires actions towards the goal. Determination to move forward. Are you determined to move forward from the past? Are you determined to move forward from your hurt? Are you determined to move forward from your unforgiveness? Are you determined to forgive? Are you determined to love? Are you here with me? You know, 
know, you have to be determined to do that. And it must, it must, it must work in your life. Amen? Amen. The Apostle Paul teaches us that we must press on in the book to the Philippians. That we must press on, reaching forward and pressing toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Intentionality keeps us focused, folks. One thing I do. He didn't say 120 things. Well, I have to learn this because yesterday or Saturday or Lord, I have to keep track of this. I have to keep track of this men's ministry. Oh my gosh. Bishop wants 60 men over there. Oh my gosh. You know what I'm doing? Oh Lord, God, I gotta think I gotta think about a church about oh my goodness. Oh God, I gotta think about the water drive. Oh God, I gotta think about baby that oh Easter's coming. Oh my you know no one thing. <laughs> Jesus is gonna help me. Amen. It's gonna get done. We're going to get through this time. And it's going to be a blessing. It's not just to get it done, but, but the attitude in getting it done. It's done with love. It's done with, you know, and that's the whole thing. Amen. Because sometimes we can say, I'll get it done. I'll work it out. <laughs> you might as well not do it. You're going to be grouchy about it. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Intentional, intentionality keeps us focused. One thing I do. First, define your goal. Then let your goal define you. Stay focused. Amen? What are your goals in life? What are your real true goals in life? Amen? Is it that relationships, like the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and then all of these things, other things will be added unto you? Amen? Keep your eyes on the prize. Who's the price? Keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Hello? Don't be ashamed of him. He's not ashamed of you. The Bible says if you fail to, if you're ashamed of me, then I'm going to be ashamed of you in front of God and all of his angels. But if you're, if you're, if you're, you know, say, that's my Lord and I love him in front of all my friends, in front of everybody. I love Jesus. Hello? I'm not ashamed. Because he's, he's, he's the one that stays in the car with me. He never runs out on me. Hello? Are you here with me? Praise God. But first, we must define our goal. What is your goal today? Amen? Better life here on earth, a better this, a better that, a new television, you know, a new car. What, what is your, what is your, you know, what's your goal in life? Amen? For mine is, my goal is each and every person that God brings me. To help them to know Christ better. Each and every person God brings. To help them to mature. To love them. To bless them. Amen. To send them a thousand million texts. Hello. To let them know that God is, you know. Telling you to look at him. That's the purpose behind a lot of the messages that I send sometimes. Amen. Amen. I didn't send somebody, you know, because I got a lot of people, family and church and friends. And one person said, Ask, uh, does Lorenzo, have you been feeling okay? I haven't got no messages. You know? And so I said, Yeah, I'm feeling all right. I just forgot about you. <laughs> Praise God, because you never answer when I text you. Hello? Praise God. Um, so, you know, get, get, get that in line, amen, um, determine, determine what your goal is and define it, amen, Intention, intentionality gives us determination to continue on, amen, forget what's behind you and reach forward to the things that are ahead of you, amen, what's ahead of you? Some of you say, well, lunch is, Pastor, <laughs> That's good because I'm getting there too. Amen. <laughs> Forget what's behind you and reach forward to the things that are ahead. Stop looking at the things that made you fail. You know that sometimes we can get stuck in the rut right there in, the, in, in, in all of our unsuccessful endeavorments. They can haunt us. I didn't get this or I didn't achieve this and I didn't achieve that. You know, so what? Start all over 
again. You can, you know, they said that that um, that um, Babe Ruth. You guys know Babe Ruth. Maybe you do. Maybe you know he's a baseball player, yes. ancient baseball player now. But he hit the most. He, at one time, he hit the most home runs in baseball. <laughs> Amen. And uh, had the record for many, many, many years until mm -hmm. the new time. Amen. But you know what the word they, they said? But he also struck out a lot. He was a leader in strikeouts. What does that tell me? Well, he, he kept swinging. He didn't give up. And for a long time, he held that legend, you know, that, that record of home run keys. But he also got the most strikeouts. But that didn't make him give up. He's still one of in the Hall of Fame. Are you with me? Praise God. So stop looking at the things that made you fail. The things that, that maybe were unsuccessful. The things maybe where you didn't succeed at. Amen. Let go, and I hope you understand this. Let go of your Jacob and become the Israel that God has called you to be. Amen. Amen? You know that, that God changed Jacob's name from Jacob to Israel. God changed his name. Amen? Yeah. Amen. How many of you know that God changed your name from sinner to save? <laughs> Hello? He gave us a name, Christian. What does Christian mean? A Christian means Christ-like, created in the image and likeness of Christ. Christ-like doesn't mean you are Christ, but you're walking in His footsteps. Amen? Amen. Hello. Praise God. So let go of your Jacob and become the Israel that God has called you to be. Let go of anything that contradicts your destiny. How many of you know that you have a destiny? Amen. Mm -hmm. You're not just put on this big ball of dirt and water. There was a plan for you that God knew before the day that you were born. Amen? God was there when you were in that belly of your mama. Yes, hallelujah. He chose the color of your hair, the color of your eyes. Amen? Now, he chose us. He chose me to be a little bit more healthier, but I messed up everything. Are you here with me? But now I'm trying to work toward back toward that goal to stay, keep my health right, amen, and my spirit right with God. Amen. Praise God. Let go of anything that contradicts your destiny. I'm no longer the observer and the trickster, the pastor with the church that's not growing, the man that keeps replaying the past, looking for all the whys and why nots, the reasons, the disappointments. Hello. No, I'm not going to live there. Get out of there. Get away from me. I'm a man of God, of God, called and anointed, more than a conqueror. I'm going to live in my destiny. I'm not going to live with my failures. Amen? And we all fail. We all drop the ball. But if I stay there, I'm never going to be of any value to anybody, myself or anybody else. So I want to get up from there. I want to say, yeah, I fell down, but you know what? God lifted me up. Amen? Mm -hmm. But it took you to say, Lord, help me. Lord, lift me up from this. Hello? Give the Lord a praise offering. Praise God. So it doesn't matter how messed up, how messed up you are, or how frustrated you may feel because you're not growing, or because you're getting pushed back or pushed down. How many of you have been pushed back and pushed down in life? Amen. You don't give up. Yeah. Just get up and you start pushing back. Not against God, though, please. You start pushing back. I'm not going to give up on God. Amen? The world may want to give up. The world's beliefs, they all contradict the things of God. They say that this is this is more important to being obedient to God or walking, you know. You say, that's a lie. Don't let that, you know, don't that's going to come against. But you know what? You keep walking in the way, the truth, and the life. The way, the truth, and the life. Amen? Amen. Hello. <clears throat> Praise God. So no matter how much you messed up and frustrated, or you've been pushed back or pushed out, you 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 must do one thing. Press toward the goal. The value of, of a believer is how much he presses. I press on toward the goal, the Apostle Paul says, to win the prize. Amen. 
I'm not just doing it for, you know, for exercise. I'm pressing, I'm, I'm moving, I'm, I'm, I'm pressing on because I'm, I'm trying to build this relationship. I want to be intentional. I want to, to intentionally seek God all the days of my life. Amen? Amen? Why? For me, it has a great importance. Why? Because I'm an instructor and, and God uses me to, to, to take care of his lambs, to take care of his sheep, to feed the lambs, to feed the sheep. Amen. So there's a heavy burden and heavy responsibility. Amen. But I welcome that because I, I want to help people. Amen. But I want to help them God's way. Are you here with me? Intentionally, intentionality gives us passion, gives us zeal, excitement, enthusiasm. Amen. It just moves us. When you're intentional, I want to intend, you know, I don't even have things that really motivate you. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, I'm going to go to Mickey, I'm going to go to Disneyland. You know? Everybody gets excited about going to Disneyland. To hang out with Mickey Mouse. You know? Now you'll go and you'll give Mickey Mouse. What's the price to get in there these days? Too much. Three hundred and fifty dollars or something like that. I thought it was bad when, when I had to take my kids there, and it cost ninety dollars a kid. You know, but they wanted to go, so I took them and I drove around Disneyland. I said, "We went to Disneyland. <laughs> now let's go eat." Hallelujah! But. You know, intentionality gives us a passion. Pressing forward for a believer must be fueled by the godly experience you experience you already have. Amen. I'm trying to show you something here. Amen. If you get it, you'll you, you'll never forget it. Amen. It must be energized by what God has already done for you. Amen. How many of you know that? How many of you felt the presence of God and God has done things in your life already? You felt that. Then you see that motivates you. I go from faith to faith, glory to glory. Amen. One experience in, uh, with God leads me to another experience with God. And I have faith that he's going to do it. I have faith that good is going to come out of it. I have Amen. faith that things are going to work out. Amen. Amen. Hello. Praise God. You must be fueled. Pressing forward for a believer, it must be fueled by the godly experience you've already lived. Paul writes to the church in Philippi. He writes... From a Roman prison. Yes, Paul was in prison. That makes him an ex-con, right? <laughs> Amen? Are you here? But praise God for that guy. Amen? Paul writes to the church in Philippi from a Roman prison, making reference of pressing forward. He's in prison. But he's telling the church, move forward, move forward, don't give up. And he was in prison for preaching the gospel, telling people about God in a world that wasn't ready. Amen. But God was ready. God was ready to set the captives free. Amen. Hello. So Paul writes there and he says, <clears throat> Paul writes to the church in, in Philippi from a Roman prison, making, ref making reference of pressing forward because he's lived an experience that has marked his life. For a godly purpose. Amen. He's telling them that because 10 years prior to this, 10 years prior to writing this letter from prison to the church of Philippi, Paul was in jail there too. <laughs> Amen. He was in there with Silas. They were in there for preaching the word of God. And then at midnight, they were all chained in this. I can't imagine this it wasn't a regular normal. This is one of those things where they harness you to it, and they like you in there. I forget the name of them, but anyways, they were they were like locked up, tied up, like in a weird, uncomfortable position. And you know what they were doing? Instead of crying about their situation, whining about their situation, Amen. The Bible says they were praising God, Amen. singing praises, and all. And it was a dark dungeon, smelling place with a bunch of other. Uh, Convicts in there, hello, prisoners that were in there. And the Bible says that he experienced, his experience was a, a miracle. That an earthquake came, shook the place up, all the chains broke off, the doors of the prison were opened. Amen? 
The guy that was in charge even wanted to take his own life because Roman law said that if you lose a prisoner, <clears throat> you have it's a life for losing your prisoners, amen? But that's the experience he's telling them about. See, this happened to me over there, he says. But you know what? I'm telling you to press on. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on and letting God work in your life, amen? amen. Hello? Praise God. It was, it was in Philippi 10 years earlier that Paul and Silas were miraculously delivered from the Philippian prison. Your pressing forward can only be energized by your godly experience, Amber. What God has already done. He's done tremendous miracles in healing you. Amen? He's done tremendous miracles in healing you, Brother Anthony. He's done tremendous miracles in touching your life, Sister Rosa. Amen? And you know that. Sister Edith, then he's done tremendous memory things, experiences in your family, your father, your mother, your life. He's done so you don't give up, you keep pressing on. Hello. Praise God. Your pressing on can only be energized by your godly experience. If if you know he's done it once, you know he'll do it again. If you know he's delivered you and saved you, he'll do it again. Because God is faithful. I tell you this morning, energize your faith by the divine experiences you've lived in order to do this one thing. And that is press forward. Keep pressing forward. Amen. I had two inspirations this week. One was today's message and another message is the battlefield of the mind. But I think I can interject that here because most of the things that stop us from pressing on is the battles that go on in our own minds. Very beautiful. Press forward. So I press. I crawl. I groan. I cry. I press. Are you hearing me? But I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up on what God is doing. Amen? Get back up and press. Don't quit. Press on. Amen? Amen? If you are an intentional believer, you can't quit. You can't give up. You keep pressing. You don't retire. Hello? There's no retiring for a believer. Yeah, you retire from jobs here. You retire from things here. But our life... Christ is something that we would never want to think, I'm going to retire from God. <laughs> Hello? God, can I get my retirement pension? God, can I, you know? No, come on. God, you want God in your life. He's the best thing. He's the best person, best, best we've ever had in our lives. Amen? He's the one that will never hurt you, but he's the one that will discipline you. He will give you a spanking. Hello? He will correct us. But he will also bless us. He will also love us. He will also care for us. He will also provide for us. He will also protect us. Hello? That's God. So I want to press on in that relationship with him. Amen? And if it's in his church, if it's in reading the Bible, if it's in praying, or it's in fellowship, like with the men's, Conference or women's conference, we've been working on that too. I've heard women's one, amen. So, so I was thinking about recommending you because they're looking for somebody to read. For you. Everybody quit messing with you. See, I almost fell down. Right? <laughs> Praise God. Um, but get back up, amen, and never quit. You can't quit, amen. You'll never make great decisions, church. Unless you live with intentionality. Unless you live with purpose in your life. Amen. Be intentional and have the purpose that God has called you for. And church, that's the word of the Lord for us today. May the Holy Spirit empower us to accomplish God's plan for our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for your mighty word.
And thank you for the boldness of the Holy Spirit to come and speak to the church today. I thank you for the strength and the comfort that your spirit brings us. Lord, we love you today. Lord, I know that we've all kind of lost track, but help us to get back on track. I know we've all been kind of pushed down and pushed back, Lord, but help us never to quit. Help us to continue to get up in your strength, in your might, Lord. Lord, I know things, Lord God, sometimes look dim, but you are the light of the world. So let your light shine in me and take the dimness away and let your brightness shine out of me, Lord. Father, I thank you for your church. Thank you for each and every person that's here today. May you bless them. May you love them. And may you continue, Father God, to intentionally hold on to your relationship with them and help them as well, Lord God. Help us all to hold on to you and to intentionally seek you every day in our lives, Lord. We love you, we appreciate you, and we give you all the glory and the honor in Christ Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 Give the Lord a praise. <laughs>